Welcome to a standard edition of the Bumblecast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle, JCRB Kraus. It's Friday time on the Bumblecast, and that means we got a load of questions from uh, from the fine folks out in the uh, broader internet community. So all our questions this week are coming to us courtesy of YouTube. All you guys down in the YouTube comments leaving your questions. Uh, you know, it's only taken us like a year to get to some of these. It's fine. <laughs> ah, sorry about it, guys. It's, we get a lot of questions. So, uh, yeah. Um, anything we need to mention before we jump right on any in? Or? Nope, let's just it. get to it. Alrighty, I'm not going to waste any time then. Here's one from Anti-Nuclear. Was there any funny mishap during production you can share? Images coming out corrupted? Fatal misspellings? Oh, there were a few. <laughs> the one that stands out in memory was uh, when Mammoth Mogul was talking about all of his fellow uh, villains being incarcerated. <laughs> except what was written was incinerated. <laughs> Well, that's two very different things. And that made it to print. So, <laughs> Whoops. Everyone got incinerated, huh? Cool. <laughs> and actually, no, very hot, because that's incinerated. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. And uh, the one story I remember, I'm going to tell one of John Gray's stories. I hope he doesn't mind. <laughs> but before I came onto the book... Uh, he was running a bit behind and this is back before everything had gone digital. So he was like hand drawing the pages and these pages would have to be mailed in and hand inked, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And uh, he ended up show, uh, taking a picture with his phone and sending it to the editor to explain why he was behind on mailing those out. And that was because a big old tree had been blown over in a storm and had crushed the trunk of his car that the pages were currently in. Oh, yeah, that's 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 pretty bad. So until the hundreds of pounds of tree were moved, there was no accessing those pages. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> uh, wow, that was uh, not what I expected. <laughs> I thought maybe he was like trying to draw a tree or something just based on your notes here, <laughs> and it was like too much, too much tree. No, it turns out it was literally too much tree on top of his drawings. <laughs> Too much trunk on the trunk, if you will. Uh, <laughs> uh, all that junk in that trunk it got flat. Wow. Incredible. <laughs> Here's a question from Blad C. Can a Zeti exert control over Shadow Skates, be it through their Technopath powers or Zavok's weird pyrokinesis? What about someone like Blaze? Uh, we got to touch on, on this on another episode, but then again, these are probably older questions. So Yeah, they are. Uh, I don't think, like, I don't think Zava could, like, make Shadow Shoes malfunction in any kind of critical way. Maybe he could make them stutter. But I'm I'm thinking that the shoes are built in such a way that they're fairly self-contained. Likewise, I don't think Blaze could, like, make them ignite and launch him into the moon. Like, maybe she could somewhat disrupt them, but I'm not seeing shadow being really at their mercy as for zavox i think he really has pyrokinesis it's just when he has got some kind of energy charge he can spit fireballs yeah that's just him that's a thing that's not really like i i think that's different than blaze's pyrokinesis like she can summon fire and control fire and negate fire zavok needs an outside source of power so he can just generate fire yeah that's just his bowseriness Show yeah. coming through. <laughs> Here's a question from Bony Cheese. Sadiam Robotnik is transported into the modern universe and has given modern Eggman's empire. Badnik forces, the Egg Dragoon, airships, Neo Metal Sonic, the whole shebang. What misery ensues? He's very confused for a bit because why is everything so garish? <laughs> why isn't it just gunmetal gray? Why is it so as colorful? As far as I can see. Yeah. What are all these knobs and buttons and doodads and whatnot? The, everything should be so smooth and streamlined and gray and green. Mm -hmm. But, you know, whatever. He's got an army. It answers to him. He's going to use it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Hedgehog is still here. 
Mm-hmm. Orbot and Cubot, you know, cringe and hide just as well as Snively does and without nearly as much access. So, hey, this is a great thing. Mm-hmm. Upgrade. <laughs> Except uh, Robotnik took over a city and stalled out at a forest for years. <laughs> he ain't going to have the ability to manage the Eggman empire as Eggman runs it. It is far too vast and multifaceted for him to competently manage. So he would be losing ground at an alarming speed. For as intimidating as uh, Sadaham Robotnik is, he's not really that great at global conquest. I mean, the presentation is fantastic because Jim Cummings is a genius. But yes. in but, terms of actual effectiveness... <laughs> But to be fair, he didn't really have much motivation beyond that single city, really, did he? I mean, there is talk of him conquering the rest of Mobius, but it just you don't really see that. Yeah, it doesn't seem like he's got the... He just doesn't have the motivation. Maybe with a maybe with an army around the world, he would have that motivation, you know? He doesn't maybe. have to go through the effort of installing everything, of... Of making and, sure that he's got everything, you know, taken over. I mean, it's not a perfect one-to-one because, you know, as much as he didn't expand beyond the city too much, he also didn't lose a lot of ground. Right. For every small victory the Freedom Fighters had, they lost ground just as quickly. Yeah. But he also wasn't contending with stuff like Gun or the extended modern cast. Right. So I think it on a bit harder. It's hard to have a truly accurate one-to-one comparison. The point is, he would be loud, he would be menacing, he would be cruel, and at the end of the day, that's not that different from Eggman. Nah. Just a different voice. Here's a question from Geo Knuckles. Would Starline be an arch enemy for Knuckles or Tails? Neither, really. Because I he doesn't view them as his own arch nemesis material. I guess the thinking in terms of like what's more, what is he more the counterpart of if you're going for the three person team aspect of the characters? I I honestly think it just doesn't fit. Yeah, like maybe tails since they're both inventors to a degree, mm-hmm. but again, it comes down to mentality. Like Eggman and Sonic are enemies, but they're also they're arch enemies because they are so diametrically opposed in terms of worldviews and lifestyles. Yeah. They are the antithesis to each other. And I guess you could make a case that, you know, tails follows Sonic and Starline follows Eggman. So there are, there are perils to be had, but Starline would never see tails as his equal, as his rival, as his arch enemy. He would see him as, just another nuisance in the way of greater plants. Sonic is a threat, sure, but Tails is an accessory to Sonic in Starline's mind. And Tails isn't going to be petty enough to say, okay, you are my number one enemy. It's just, no, you're a jerk. I'm going to stop you. Mm -hmm. He's, he's, He's a little too pragmatic to be hung up on who is my number one. And given how very, very little they interacted, Knuckles would probably be like, who? Yeah. (laughs) Who are you? (laughs) Which is funny because, you know, Starline was inspired by a Knuckles palette glitch. Right. He's very much built off of some early Knuckles concepts, but they themselves have almost nothing overlapping in terms of character. <laughs> it's not, they have nothing in common, really, no. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. <sighs> All right, we got a question here from Green Soda. What would a team with Heavy King, Mephilus, and Infinite be like? Weak or powerful, perhaps? a dysfunctional um (laughs) infinite would think the other two are weak because of course he would i mean i could see heavy king taking overt command i mean it's right there in his name (laughs) yeah infinite is content to follow orders so long as it interests him enough and mephilus is the manipulator who prefers to work from the shadow so he'd play along but Mm -hmm. all three of them would have their own agendas and would turn on each other the minute the opportunity arose. All right. All right. Here's a question from Ralph OTG. 
Be it comic, novel, graphic novel, or something entirely different, what form will the Lost Hedgehog Tales take when it's eventually published? A PDF. Yeah. It's you, s- straight prose. Yeah, you're not planning on actually like making it a making it into print or anything. No, it's right? not going to be a product. Right. It's it is when you get down to a glorified fanfic. Mm-hmm. It's just unfortunately it it's kind of stuck in the middle of a minefield at the moment. So still. Sorry, folks. And we got this question here from Spell I Cup. In issue 12 of IDW Sonic, Robotnik gained his memories after coming into contact with Metal Sonic. This got me thinking. If Robotnik were to work on a project with Bell, would she bring out Robotnik's creative and fun side? No, because you're missing the point that it was Starline and the Warp Topaz messing with Eggman's head that primed him to react to the side of Metal Sonic. Eggman as he is now is Eggman. Yep. Here's a question from Michael B. Starline may have become disillusioned with Eggman, but how would he react to classic Eggman? Kind of bemused. It's always fun to look at where your heroes came from and, (laughs) you know, see where the early sparks of genius began. But what was with that outfit? (laughs) Honestly, The, the cape has a nice flourish, but he needed something a little more commanding, a little more... Michael Jackson y. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> That's important. You gotta have that. You gotta have flair. It's all about presentation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kitten Soldier is here with a question. Okay, you made it pretty clear last time that they're coded that way, but just to make it crystal clear, Tangle and Whisper's sexuality. Are they canon WLW? And if so, can at least one of them say it in the comics? I hate to be so indirect because it feels like it's baiting, and I don't mean to do that. Yeah. But it's not canon until it's printed, and we can't really commit to it right now. So At least not on the page. Yeah. So that's the intention of a number of creators involved, myself included, but it's not something that I can say definitively. Because if I do that, I worry that I'm going to ruffle a feather somewhere. So I I wish it were more clean cut than that. I really do. I think that's about as clean cut as you can possibly be without actually (laughs) saying it overtly. So, yeah. Here's a question from Killian M. What the plot of the Orbot and Orbanot, specifically the one from the way, way old Archie comics, four-issue miniseries be? Well, there's a lab accident. And Orbot's head gets stuck as the core of Orbanot, and Orbanot gets stuck on Orbot's body. <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, the only place that can do the repairs is on the other side of the continent. So they have all sorts of zany misadventures trying to get across country to get themselves back to normal. And <laughs> along the way, they learn a little something about each other. They learn a little something about themselves. And they also stave off Infinite's resurrection of Mephilus. Oh, good. <laughs> well, <laughs> at least they uh, could get something done and learn a bit. All thanks to the magical power of the monkey destruction switch. <laughs> Thank you, monkey destruction switch. Here's a question from Random Posts. Why did Archie Sonic not stop the second Super Genesis wave? Because Eggman interrupted him. Because if he did, then, uh, well, then... The reboot wouldn't have needed to happen. Well, yeah, the I mean, <laughs> out of context version is yes. there was legal stuff. The, re- in the, the story, yeah, the real world version is it had to happen, and there's no other way to get around it. But like in the story, Super Sonic says, "You know, stop! You're going to mess things up." And Eggman's attacking him anyway. It's like mm-hmm. right there on the page. Yep. And we got one last question here before we take a break from Type Re Gaming TPG. If Vector and the Bumble King were in the same room together, what would they talk about? All the get-rich-quick schemes that failed miserably. <laughs> is that what the Bumble King talks about? I'm assuming they the mean... Bumble King is. I'm assuming that, that, that they mean the logo. <laughs> the Our little uh, avatar, you know? Yeah. You're saying that the little avatar doesn't have a will of his own? That he doesn't have aspirations? No, no, he I'm just saying. He is the king of Bumbles. I thought, I thought, I was just making sure we weren't confusing it, saying it was 
because you are also the Bumble King. You yes, yourself, yes, yes, and I, then there's I also am Ian the Flynn, the Bumble King, but the Bumble King itself, oh, okay, yeah, is a secondary entity. Yeah, it's a it's a multi dimensional, high level thing. <laughs> did did <laughs> okay, got it. Did Vector Vector didn't get taken for a ride by NFTs, did he? <laughs> I really hope not. I hope he has a little bit more wherewithal than that. He might have looked at it at first and thought it was a good idea, but I don't know, man. Let's just say that as an experienced detective, it is suspicious that there is zero evidence of that. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh a good boy. detective always covers his tracks. I mean, no, wait. <laughs> That's exactly how that works, Vector. Yep. No, no, no. SPO, I can't explain. See, I left the computer on and Charmy just happened to click the random buttons needed to purchase 70 grand worth of Bumble coin. <laughs> we need to we need that bumble coin it's not worth anything but it's cool to have <laughs> uh, it's like the first eco-friendly ntf it's minted without actually making it an ntf it's like beans from the early 2000s from the dot com before the dot com bubble oh jeez i forgot about those <laughs> they aren't actually worth wow. anything they just you just redeem them for coupons <laughs> i mean that's that's kind of how the, the whole internet currency sort of thing used to work <sighs> then it became a bit too real and yet still not real enough <laughs> <sighs> oh well <laughs> let's take a break and uh get it get, get it get 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 paid because that's what we're doing when we take this break and we're back we got a question from speedy what inspired the creation of the warp topaz uh the chaos emeralds and phantom ruby to be honest um honestly the phantom ruby more than anything because if we already have chaos emeralds and now we have phantom rubies what are other gemstones of magical power that we can have? <laughs> All of them. Uh, just make them up. And that's a dangerous precedent to set because then it's like, all right, and now here's the transdimensional sapphire. And <laughs> here's the Gilgamesh ruby. And, you know, if it's a gemstone with an adjective, it can do things like, nah, we really shouldn't fall down that rabbit hole. <laughs> Then you need to have someone guard the master version of that. Now you're just back in the same situation. Ow. <laughs> ah. Certified nobody has a question. Knuckles had a home in Sonic Battle not too far from the Emerald Shrine, didn't he? Uh, I'd have to review the game. There is a structure, but I thought that looked more like a temple. Then again, the geography of Holy Summon and all that is very bizarre anyway. So, ah. Mm -hmm. uh, Oh, well. Necromage has a question. If Eggman would lose his memory and become a version of Mr. Tinker again, how would Sonic react? Will he change his method considering what happened last time? How would Shadow react? Would he go straight for the kill this time? Sonic would be vindicated. You know, he was right. Eggman did go back to his old, but not too old ways. Uh, he might be a little more protective of Mr. Tinker rather than just let him be. You know, make sure there's no Starline 2.0. Mm. Inspecting all gemstones that come into the village. Is that a warp topaz? No. Okay. Is that a, is that a Gilgamesh ruby? No. Okay. <laughs> Shadow would be wary. They've already had this fight. They've already had this discussion. He sees no point in doing it again, but he's not trusting it and he never will. Mr. Tinker could turn old and gray and die and Shadow would be standing on the grave going any minute now. I'm watching you. Stay in there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah, I would I would prefer Shadow guard, be gu on guarding Eggman's grave too because even if Eggman himself does not rise out of the uh, of the grave on his own, there's going to be somebody who wants to exhume him. <laughs> there's going to be someone who's going to somehow revive him. An old man Starline drives up with a backhoe. Mm -hmm. I'll get him out. I'll prove to you he's still alive. I can hear him in my head. <laughs> he says all is forgiven. 
<laughs> of course. Every the 100 of years. <laughs> yeah. Of cough and control. <laughs> Every 100 years, Eggman rises once again. <laughs> <laughs> and a Belmont must stop him. Oh wait, no, <laughs> no, that's not right. That's not it. <laughs> what a terrible night for a wig- werehog curse. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is a hedgehog? Just a miserable pile of rings. But enough talk. Have at you. But enough talk. Let's do it to it. <laughs> But enough talk. It's jelly and jam time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kanoka Club has a question. Hey, if you ever want Shadow to use Wisps and Sega says no, you could always point out that he used Wisps to boost in forces. After all, who is Sega to argue with what was in a fairly recent game? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, you sweet summer child. <laughs> but no, you bring up a good point, And that would definitely be something to consider. Yeah, and they'd probably just be like, ah, nope, we changed your mind. Or, nope, he just did that once. That's it. That one time. Never again. <sighs> oh, Sega. I love you, but I also hate you. Aaron K has a question. Pales and Starline have much in common. They're both geniuses, and they're both associates of Sonic and Eggman, respectively. Could we see an arch rivalry between these two down the line? Could Bell be involved? Uh, we went through this yeah, on we... the last episode, but... Yeah, we just covered this. Yeah. And what we said last time was there are certainly parallels, but I don't see them being arch enemies because Starline would never respect Tails enough to treat him as a viable enemy. And Tails is too pragmatic to get hung up with that kind of thing. Starline is a jerk. He's going to stop him from being a jerk. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, who knows? Maybe Bell would be involved somewhere. That could be an interesting uh, impetus. Smoogie Boogie has a question. Following up on the Halloween transformation question. Oh boy, it gives you just an idea how old this one might be. (laughs) (laughs) What would Big dress up as slash become? Would he even know it's Halloween? No, he's kind of off in his own little world. Time doesn't mean much to Big, but, you know, Amy and Cream come along. They want to include him. They don't want him to be alone on the holidays. It's a holiday. And I don't (laughs) know. Dress him up as like a big abominable snowman. Hmm. Wasn't there that one as a Yeti? They already the sign the uh, the explorers of Mystic Ruin already kind of mistook him for Bigfoot. So go for it. (laughs) Wasn't there one time he dressed up in this was in a off panel, I think, where he dressed up as Robotnik Eggman, something like that. Something happened like that. I'm trying to remember that. I could be wrong on that. Of course, I'd forgotten that uh, in the original SA2, an alternate skin was big in the Egg Walker. (laughs) Well, eh. There you go. Yeah, sure. Why not? (laughs) Here's a question from Yozoi. I must ask the question of utmost importance. This is something I think is absolutely critical to Sonic's world building. I must ask. Of the core IDW characters, what is each character's preference? Taco Tuesdays or Wing Wednesdays? Also, for good measure, which do each of the Freedom Fighters like? Thank you for your time. Uh, if you're saying core IDW characters, I'm assuming the OCs and not the main cast, because that would just be I figured Sonic that, cast. Yeah. yeah. Um, we know what see. Jules' preference is. Yeah, Tangle likes Taco Tuesday for the alliteration. It's mm-hmm. Tangle's Taco Tuesday. It's totally Tangle's Taco Tuesday. I mean, Wing Wednesday is also alliteration. Yeah, and that's why it has to be Whispers Wing Wednesday. Aha. And whispers like, I don't care. And she's like, no, it totally is. And she's like, okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> stupid, stupid lemur. Why do I love you? <laughs> we have, we, we, we uh, gloss over night and dawn a lot. Granted, they haven't shown up nearly as much, but I imagine night is a wingman himself because that's very easy to eat while you're on the air. But uh, dawn is entirely a taco person. He he has to get it fully loaded, and it makes a mess, but that's fine, because he's cleaning up everybody's mess anyway. He might as well just add it to the pile. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Freedom fighter-wise, Rotor's a wingman. I can see that. Like, the <laughs> wing goes in the mouth, the bone comes out. That's just how it works. Easy. You just hear this, and it's gone. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, Bunny's Taco Tuesday. She's Tex-Mex all the way, and that 
that's borderline, but it fits. <laughs> yeah, she was. Uh, maybe that's why she's into Tex Mex because she's on. She grew up on the borderline. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Antoine spends entirely too long in the kitchen for just like 12 wings. They're scrumptious. Don't get me wrong. They're phenomenal. Why are they duck wings? Well, cause that's just Antoine, but they're really good. But you realize it's supposed to be just like a bunch of wings, right? Not just, okay, never mind. They're mm-hmm. good. So I can't really argue. Uh, <laughs> Sally is forbidden from actually participating. All she can do is consume. Well, yeah. But, uh, because she she is not allowed in the kitchen, but I think I figure she's more of a Taco Tuesday type of gal. She likes the options. She likes weighing what she can do with each taco shell, the ratio of each ingredient to go in there. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm down. Me, I'm a taco guy. Rough and tumble. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about are, them. They're diametrically opposed. One is a Taco Tuesday guy. One's an a uh, wing Wednesday guy, but they forget which one they prefer week to week. (laughs) So they have the same fight every week. It's just, they keep switching sides and they can't remember which side they were on initially. And did they manage to convince the other one? Or was it the other way around? Well, whatever, this one's superior. (laughs) And then they just steal it from everybody else. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. (laughs) Say they just have whatever. (laughs) They don't care. Ultimately, they don't actually care. They'll just, they'll just eat it all. And Starline has no interest in either one, probably. They're not uh, no, sophisticated it's, enough. It's absolutely banal. I have my eating schedule planned out for the next 30 years. Uh-huh. Why revolve an entire day around finger food? It's idiotic. Wait, which one does the doctor prefer? <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm not so sure. Which one would Eggman prefer? Subway sandwich Sundays. Mm, well, I, I consider that. Sure. <laughs> All right, here's one from Saving Throws. Uruin in a fight. Shadow, the ultimate life form, or Perfect Cell from Dragon Ball Z, the perfect life form. Sorry, but Perfect Cell. <laughs> uh, it's not a competition. Like, even if we're not counting returning from the dead Perfect Cell where he you know, cheesed it and got the instant transmission because hacks. We're we're talking like pre-explosion perfect cell. He is still a world-ending threat without a ton of effort. Right. Shadow is more of a 10 square meters, very destructive force. No, Perfect Cell would kick him once. He would turn inside out, and that would be the end of it. (laughs) Like, if we give Shadow the handicap of a Chaos Emerald so he can Chaos Control, Perfect Cell is frozen in time for as long as that lasts, but Shadow's not going to be able to do any kind of lasting damage. Any damage he does do is just going to be healed. So, sorry, but Perfect Cell by a mile. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And we got a question here from Aaron M. If a character, say, like a mythological legendary creature slash demigod that added onto Sonic lore appeared that's actually faster than Sonic, how do you think this would affect Sonic? Do you think this would mess with Sonic's ego and make him envious? Or do you see them as a new competition slash potential ally? So we're saying like a a new heroic character that is some kind of semi-divine individual and by default just faster than sonic yeah sure um i would see sonic initially being rather startled and somewhat impressed that someone is faster than him and then he would see it as the new milestone to reach a challenge yes (laughs) yeah a a friendly rivalry you know he keeps losing races it's like man you're fast oh that's fun let me try that again and being Sonic, he would eventually catch up and surpass because that's just what Sonic do. Mm-hmm. But I don't see it being anything like world shattering or life altering for him. It would just be somewhat a new context for him is that there is someone faster and now he has something to strive for. This version of Sonic these days is too, uh, he's too cool to get wrapped up in that sort of rivalry stuff. You know, he's, he's, he's a bit more laid back than he used to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like it. Like, you know, he if he loses a race to Jet, he's upset that he, you know, didn't perform well, but he's not going to begrudge Jet the victory. Right. 
he's, he's like, a, all right, well, well run race. Nicely done. Yeah. He's a Sonic is a, uh, he's not a sore loser. Not yeah. like, not like Eggman. <laughs> That's like one of the few little caveats to jet that I really enjoy is that, you know, I think it was in free riders where Sonic's extreme gear is kind of on the fritz. And so he loses and he's like, ah, oh, well, so it goes. And Jet's like, no, 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 no. If I'm going to win, I want to win legit. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that's a cool part of him. And we got the question here from Flameborn. Thoughts on the Sandblasters and could a similar group be able to appear in IDW? They were kind of a neat change of pace at the time. I also didn't realize for the longest time that they were all Looney Tunes XPs. Huh. I, I don't know if I ever realized that, <laughs> but yeah. Jack Rabbit is bugs. Yeah. You got, you're right. <laughs> oh, a coyote. You got yourself a road runner. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. <laughs> the bear was the only one that didn't really fit. And that's why I named him Avery after Tex Avery. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> but otherwise a faction that's anti Eggman, but also anti Sonic but still arguably heroic. Uh, you don't quite have that, I guess, in IDW Sonic. Surgeon Kit are anti both, but they're also very much self-serving. Right. They're villains. Mm -hmm. The Sand Blasters were bad people, but I I have a hard time calling them out and out villains. They were trying to do the right thing. For themselves. Yeah, but still. Like they they would be vicious towards the Legionnaires, but they're the enemy, right? You know, so mm -hmm. I guess they're kind of more anti heroes. Yep. When you get down to it, mm -hmm. so maybe. But we've got a lot of OCs in the book as it is, and a lot of things to explore. So yep. I don't know if we need a whole new team right now. <laughs> and some people are kind of like tired of the the OCs. It's like, well. Honestly, they kind of serve the same purpose that the original characters in Archie did because they also couldn't really go beyond the basic status quo for the Sega characters yeah. back then either. So, although I I would say that with IDW, you know, with Archie Sonic, it was you would have original characters that were built to exist within their own microcosms. Right, yeah. Like the Moropus crew were designed to feel like they fit in a Sonic setting, but their story and their interactions were all very self-contained. Sonic was kind of a guest in their sphere of influence. Right. Um, and same goes for you know, all the freedom fighter groups around the world. It was here are, here's the cast and the setting for Sonic to enter into that fits within the Sonic theme, but it's all built around that. With the IDW original stuff, I feel like we're more approaching it as individual elements that can benefit the greater Sonic whole. These are guests within Sonic's world rather than Sonic is a guest in their world, even if it is themed to be Sonic-like. Okay. So it's a very different approach. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. I, I, I still, they still kind of serve similar purposes, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's At just, the highest level, but yeah, it's just a different, just a different way of doing things. But it's otherwise serves kind of the same end goal, essentially. So, eh. Oh well, I like them. So, <laughs> here's one from Inferno Earth. Did the Super Genesis Wave destroy the Source of All and the Sword of Acorns? Yep, gone forever, never to be seen again. Now, to be super technical about it, and I say that and. It's like, it's been so long. The detail is that when Robotropolis, <clears throat> when Robotropolis got nuked, that atomized the source of all at the source of all. And then, <laughs> and then when Sir Connery and Mogul dueled, Sir Connery's sort of light obliterated the corrupted sort of acorns. And therefore they were already gone, but Super Genesis Wave kind of wiped out that reality in general. So in that regard, yes, they are like super double gonsies. <laughs> no take backs. <laughs> yeah. Never go. Never going to see them again. <laughs> uh, they both got nuked from orbit. It was the only way to be sure. 
And finally, our last question this week comes from none other than Manly Flower Enjoyer. Before you even get to the question, I have to ask, does that mean that you are a manly individual that enjoys flowers or do you enjoy flowers that are manly? Why not both, both? are acceptable. Why not both? Both are perfectly valid. I just, I want to know which one. Please comment May, below. What if they're just a manly flower that is just enjoying things? You know, they just enjoy life. That's entirely another option. So please let us know which one. Yeah, sure. And the question is, what's that nice ass theme? Or maybe it's, what's that nice ass theme? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Punctuation is important. <laughs> Syntax. Syntax everywhere. <laughs> I'm going to give this one to you, Kyle, because you know the full history of the Bumblecast theme. The Bumblecast theme, yes, yes. I assume that's what they're referring to, and not the. Well, it is a nice ass theme. So yeah, it's not. It's, it's not a. It's not a nice ass theme, though. The, the, that would be different. That would be if we replaced all the instruments with uh, flatulence, which uh, could be an option someday. Who knows? No, it absolutely is not an option. Don't even say that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh so it's actually interesting because uh it was originally the theme of another show <laughs> kinda in a sense it's a remix of a theme from another show and uh i asked if we could use it and the original the original show host said yes we could use that remix of it but it was originally a uh a theme song for um a podcast called Noise Channel, which was about chiptune. And uh, it was part of one of their, I think it was the anniversary celebration for that show. The host, True Star, she put together an album of uh, various chiptune themes and remixes of that song and a few other things here and there. Put it together as a compilation. And uh, then that version of the song, there's one version of the song on there composed by Coda, who uh, also was very nice and gave us uh, permission to use that version of the theme and now t lopes remixed it a few years ago and that's the version we now use at the top so yeah it's been an interesting uh, journey for that song <laughs> and that's about it we're, we're keeping this theme nice and safe until maybe uh maybe true star will decide to return one day to the airwaves she put on a fantastic show so I would really like to get the full archive of it to have it up on KNGI because it's, uh, I think a lot of it has been lost, but eh, maybe someday we'll be able to recover that. So anyway, that's sort of the history of the uh, theme song. I kind of didn't realize initially that it was a remix of the noise channel theme either. <laughs> so, but hey, it worked out. And uh, they were very nice in allowing us to use it. And T. Lopes was amazing in remixing it. So mm -hmm. awesome. And that's it. Yep. That's going to wrap us up for this episode of the Bumblecast. Before we go, here's a big thank you to all the patrons over at patreon.com backslash Bumblecast, ko-fi.com backslash Bumblecast, and our YouTube members who make this show possible. Big thank you to Daniel H., Alex P., James K., John B., Jennifer R., Robotnik Holmes, Samuel P., Sam Cybercat, Mike B., Dave M., Coupling Crew 128, Do Is Dis Den, Off, Andrew D., Salute Your Cat, J. Frost, Scruffy Matt, Hero of Y13, Chris A., Sony, Ryan D., John M., Noni, Don B., Yami M., Lee H. K., and Lisa M., Chevelle, Fiona M., Piggy Bank, Blue Title Gamer, Invade Turbo Tunis, Ben W., Tick Tick, Sonic Sonic Sonic, Xanderoni the Painter, Final Neil, Jonathan D., Axis Mimic, Solaire Stain, Godzilla, Dabbler, the Dalek, Scurvy Pirate Hog, The Name is X, Chaos Universe, Sonic Legacy, Daniel B, Ava Arctic, Pedanti Cat, Dove, Red the Supernamic, Pandolce, Quaggle Gaggle, Chad, Professor Rye, Jennifer H, Les, Cameron H, Sapphire Scarletta, Preston M, Alvamon or Yukon, Arc Fighter, Noah S, Kojira Highwind, Super Sonic Fan, Chase L, Nondal, Alex GS, Awesome Cakester, Kimiko, Rad Ree, Callum Q, Shaggy Dog, Jack the Animator, Just a Mountain Soul, Finest Cacophony, Ty H, John the Real Waluigi, Maddie H, Jolene B, KJB, and Tails, Dream Boaten, In Zephyr, Owen BD, Moxter Rusevel, Lights Ubel, The Marble Gardener, T Ranger, Lewis J, Four Sonic Fan, Joshua S, Omega Watt, Agent Kaz, Saving Throws, Navare, Exadel, Michael P, Ty Cyan, Lemur Chicken, Jamal S, Neo Strife, Rhythm Raccoon, Lacey M, Wild 48, Fenris Asger, Pap, Delta God 77, Dapper Shinks, Miggy Sawdust, Pig Dan 20, Jinx, Unlikely Veronica, Spiral Warrior, Lucky Lychee, Angela V, Dr. Meccano, Oz Jam, Miles the Prower, Shimmy M, 
Starlight, Second Zed Cartoonist, Strawberry Cheesecake, Staff Cube, Speed Weed, Scourge Time, Nova Poly Duo, Mobius, Kofi Supporter, Madeline Blue Star 7, Joester SSB, Digama, Damien B, Chaos Sonic, Ryoko Shion, Meta Mode, Danny Light, Frost the White Lion, Agnes S, and Wheels 282 Hedgehog. And there they go. All those lovely people. All 100 billion of you at this point. Sure, why not? I don't know, man. It's like 140, right? It's ridiculous. Over 140. It's ridiculous. Keep it coming. <laughs> That's going to wrap us up for this episode, but we will see you tomorrow for our end of the month live Q&A sessions. Oh, boy. Yeah. Here we go again. That's <laughs> going to be 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on June the 25th. In case you are somehow listening to this between now and then. Yep. Very small window of opportunity, but hey, we got to put that out there. Yep, yep, yep. It'll be on our YouTube channel, as always. So stick around, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. Hey, there you go. Hey. Get notified. An actual reason to work with the algorithm. Mmm. Algorithm. Time to hit a billion likes. Can we do it? <laughs> do it. It'd be neat. <laughs> anyway, that's it for us. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And we will see you next time on the Bumblecast. Take care, everybody. Bye. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to this now, if you're not, then uh, see you next time. Whenever that will be. Bye. Someone do the nice ass theme. <laughs> uh, I would. I would appreciate that. You've been listening to the Bumblecast, a co-production of Bumble King Comics and the KNGI Network. Original theme music composed by Ken Coda Snyder. Remixed intro by T Lopes. Find out more information, along with podcast feeder links, MP3 downloads, and more at bumbleking.com and KNGI.org. Monk, yep, good old yep. monkey destruction switch. <sighs> Hit the Bumblecast destruction switch. Blow up this episode. <laughs>